Hey, how are you doing? Scotty from Scott's Bass Lessons again. If you haven't been to the website, scottsbasslessons.com yet, make sure you do so straight after this lesson because there is hours and hours of free video lessons just like this. And if you sign up over there as well, you get access to the back, the back, the backstage area, which is where all the backing track library is. So you can download the backing track that you've just heard. Um, so you can play along yourself. And also there's um, exclusive member-only videos there too. So go check that out after this lesson. So I've been getting a load of emails about looking into grooves, you know, creating grooves and just doing a bit of an analysis basically on a certain groove. So I just thought I'd put a groove together and then take you through that groove and highlight some certain points that you can get in your own groove and grooves and bass lines as well. The, the chord that we're vamping over in, or vamping underneath, in this um, tutorial is a G7 chord, okay? And that has this sound, okay? Yeah, it's a G dominant seven arpeggio and G dominant seven chord. But the gag is that the bass line that I've created isn't using all of the notes of the G7 chord. And this is why I've put this tutorial together, just to give you a different take on, you know, some little elements you can put in your own bass lines. So let's, normally I would say, if you're gonna make a groove, you know, if you're gonna create a groove, you wanna be using the, the notes from the chord that you're grooving along with. So for instance, on a G7 chord, okay, the root note is G, the third is B, the fifth is D, and the seventh is F. And that gives you the G dominant seven arpeggio. So that's G, B, D, F, and G, okay? Root, third, fifth, flat seven, an octave, and then, and obviously that's all over the neck. Yeah? But, and I should say, if you were normally creating, you know, if the guitar player, keyboard player was playing a G7 chord, a vamp, you'd be creating your bass line from these notes. You can also use the G Mixolydian scale, but these notes will be the foundation, the chord tones, okay, are the foundation of your, your bass line. So it could be. Um... Yeah, so that's just chord tones from the G7 arpeggio. But for the bass line that we, we're using for this tutorial that you heard me play before, I'm using some notes that aren't in the Mixolydian scale and aren't in the G7 arpeggio either. They're in the G blues scale or G minor blues scale, which is, I'm going to take you through that now. It's G, B flat, C, D flat, D, F, G, okay? It's a minor pentatonic scale, but with a, a D flat, a blue note in there as well. So G, B flat, C, C sharp or D flat, D, F, G. And you've heard this, this, uh, this sound a zillion times before. Yeah, that, that sort of like... You've heard it a million times before, that blues sound. But, you know, a lot of people get confused because they, they think that you've just got to use the, the chord tones of the G7 um, when, when you're creating a groove. But this is, on a G, on a dominant 7 chord, this is one of the only times that you can actually, you can step out of that and, and use a different scale over it, and that is the G blues scale, which is what the, the, the groove that we're using, that's what it's created from. So as well as the G7 arpeggio, you want to be using the G minor. I'm just going <laughs> to write it there so I don't have to stretch over. Blue scale. Okay. And the weird thing is that the, the G minor blue scale, as I said before, it's got a B flat in it. 
But this has got a B in it. So really, and this is where, you know, um, I think it's Miles Davis that said that there's no wrong notes. And this is like a proof in the pudding. There is no wrong notes. You know, it's, it's a rule that we can break and it sounds really good. You know, obviously there's rules that you break and it sounds really bad, but this sounds really good. So on a dominant seven chord, on a dominant seven groove over a static, you know, several bars in a row, if you want to get that bluesy sound, you can play a minor blues scale, okay, even though it has got a, um, you're playing over something that has a major third in it, okay. So now let's look at the groove that I was playing. And there's something else really interesting about it. When somebody tells you to create a groove or you're in you know, a practice situation or a jam situation with friends and they say, oh, we're on, let's say for instance, a G7, we're gonna play a sort of like. You know, G7 vibe. Generally, when you're starting a groove, I expect you'll think, okay, I'm gonna play the root note first. Okay, so you'll think two, three, four. Yeah, you'll be hitting that ball, 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 da da. You'll be hitting that root note first because you're so used to it, right? Um, well, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to do that. You can actually displace the root note. You can actually start on any of the notes within the arpeggio or any of the notes within the minor blues scale of this chord. You don't have to start your groove on a root note. And that's why with the groove that I'm using for this lesson, um, I started on an F. I start on the, yeah, so it's two, three, a four. So I'm actually sort of like starting on the dominant seven, that flat seven of the G, and then going up to the G, two, a three, a four. Yeah, and then I'm G to B flat. So, ba -da -dee -dee. So remember, next time you're creating a groove, can you start on something that isn't a root note? It'll give it, it'll give it just sort of like, you know, it'll just make it a little bit more interesting. For instance, I could start on the, the, the fifth. Let's start on the fifth, actually. Let's start on the B, the D, sorry. Oh, so it's the D, the fifth. So here's the arpeggio, G, B, D, F, and G. Okay, G, B, D, F, G. I'm gonna start on the fifth. I'm gonna create a groove from the fifth, a two, three, a four. Yeah, so it just gives you this whole new spectrum of stuff to look into when you're not always tied to the root like that. But generally, I recommend playing the root somewhere in the, uh, in the bar but just displacing it from the first beat, you know, play it sort of like later on. Anyway, to the groove that we're working on, we're starting on an F, okay? And we're going chromatically up to the G. So let's just hear that groove once more. A two, three, four. In fact, let's just look at that specific section. Loop it round. Slow it down. Two, three, four. There. This took me quite a while to get down, actually, when I saw somebody doing it. I think they're called stings. I'm going really fast over that fret, that first fret to second fret, and the thumb stays in one place. Now, the gag is, if you've got too much tension in your hand, 
you won't be able to do that. It'll just be too stiff. Remember when you're playing, look, I can actually play. I can play with my thumb down here. I'm not squeezing the neck, yeah? There's my thumb down here. I'm not, you know, having to squeeze it. That's how much, how little tension I have in my hand. Not, I'm using a little bit of shoulder to pull back. Pull back on the neck. So instead of just using my hand, I'm using a little bit of shoulder to pull back and get the tension from there. Okay, so again, back to the groove. Two, a three, four. The next part. So it's again the same thing. And then this is where we're using again from the minor blues scale. You can use that sting again. So we sort of sliding into that D flat, which is definitely not in the G7 chord, but it's that blue note. Gives it that bluesy tone, yeah? So, so right up to there, let's loop that round twice. Then it goes back to the first section. So we'll just get to that bit in a minute. So just over the... There's three sections there, so ba da da da, bo bo da, ba da da da, bo ba ba da, ba da da da, bo bo da. That was the same as the first one, and then the fourth one, ba da da da, and that bit is this is a really like a like a cliche line that over that again a G7 chord. We're playing the. 13th or the 6th of the chord there, which is an E, so if you go up the Mixolydian scale, G, A, B, C, D, E. So E to B flat. And you can do this on any uh, dominant chord, okay? So if it was a C dominant, so we're playing, and I think when I played at the start of this video, I trilled on that, which is a... So it's a hammer on a pull off that, that motion. And what I'm doing there is I'm hammering on and then pulling off. Now when I put, it's not lifting off, I'm not doing this. Because then the note just dies. I'm plucking with my right hand, then hammering on, pull, hammer, Pull, I'm pulling down off the string to get that, you know, to get the notes sound out. So. I quite like doing it with my third finger. I think it's maybe because it's a little bit stronger. And then. So that's just the G to the flat seven. G to F. And I'm using that sting. Oh, but I could do. No. It gives that similar type of, uh, you know, that trill sound. Not sure which one I prefer. Maybe, you know, different ones for different gigs. So let's just hear the entire riff, right, quite slowly. A two, three, four. Even slower, two, three, four. Thank you. 
there's sometimes when I'm playing a riff like that, going off the subject a little bit, I want it to sound a little bit muted, a bit kind of Rocco Prestier, Tower of Power. If you've heard of Tower of Power before, or if you haven't heard of Tower of Power, check that band out. They've got a bass player called Rocco Prestier, amazing um, bassist that played with them. And, and he had a, a kind of muted sort of like thing going on with these fingers here where he'd play with, with his first, I think he played with his first and second finger. I'm not sure, there's probably some big fans out there who'll tell me. Um, but he played with, with the first and second finger, but on this I'm just going to use my first finger, and then rested the rest of the fingers over the strings. So instead of getting a... He got a... Off. So you like muted it. So he would play a, a kind of line like... It's that kind of like James Jameson, that muted, you know, Motown thing. I've seen a lot of guys do it. Um, there's a great video online of Danny Mo Morris, one of the teachers from Berkeley, doing a doing it's not a lesson on it it's just sort of like it's the first time i actually saw it was a video of his that it really stood out I was like wow i've got to get that technique down um he teaches at berkeley at uh, danny mo morris and oh, the guy who plays for uh, bruno mars as well i've seen him do it a lot as well so check them guys out sorry bruno mars is bass player i can't remember your name amazing player though thank you for that last album it rocked so um, I'm just going to uh, shut the lesson down now and we're going to go and listen to that riff along with the backing track. If you do want the backing track, you can get it completely free. It's just on the website. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the link below and it will take you straight through to the website. If you've enjoyed this lesson, click the like button, the thumb up button. Um, I'll love you forever. And other than that, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next lesson. Take it easy. I'll see you in the shed. Thank mm -hmm. you.